a reminder just to let everybody know. So at the end of the session, you will receive an email that has a recording and any helpful handouts or anything. So today's session is Guide to Managing Clients' Financials Effectively, specifically through Zoho Applications. And uh, we're going to give you some helpful tips on how you can either open up doors or make it easier on yourself. So before we get started, let's take care of a few housekeeping items. So this is sponsored by Zoho and specifically the CPA team over here at Zoho. Um, you're using the Showtime um, tool right now. And if you could look at your, your left-hand side, you'll be able to see the questions tab and your handouts tab. The questions tab is where you'll be able to ask questions. We actually have one of our partner support managers here, DRaj, so he'll be able to answer any specific Zoho questions in there. Val Steed, he's a resident CPA. He's our resident CPA, so he'll be able to answer some accounting questions. And Tal and myself will be able to answer some partner questions. And the handouts section at the bottom, we have a bunch of great handouts. So we have a, um, a link to our website, a link to this presentation, a link to analytics. We have a bunch of stuff in there, so make sure you check it out. And while we're going through the session, you can open it up and check it out as well. In order, this session does qualify for one CPE credit. And in order to receive the CPE credit, you have to attend for at least 60 minutes and answer three out of the four polling questions. And you need to complete the evaluation at the end of the uh, session. So that will pop up after I end the session. So today, the team that will be speaking, we have a bunch of people popping in and out throughout the session, but we have myself who's, my name is Nathan Rogerson. I'm the marketing manager over here, specifically under the Zoho Finance Partner Program. And we have our resident CPA, Val Steed, and I'll let him introduce himself. Good morning, good afternoon, and middle of the night to some of you. Looks like some of you coming in from middle of the night. Uh, yes, I've been a CPA for many years in the accounting technology industry. My responsibility here at Zoho is to continue building an accountant's program. We hope to eventually have a full tilt accounting program with certification, specialized support, special benefits, a lot of really nice stuff for accountants, and we're working on that currently. So very happy to be here. We have a great team and I think a great lineup for you today. So welcome. Yeah, thanks, Val. And we also have, like I mentioned earlier, uh, our lead accountant uh, support, and his name's D. Rodrian. Can you hear me all right, man? Yeah, I can hear you, Nathan. Um, hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining in for today's session. Uh, so just to introduce myself, um, I, I take care of partner support, basically finance partner support in specific to accountants, CPAs, or bookkeepers. If they have run into any questions with the finance applications, they can reach out to me and I, I help them streamline things for their clients. Awesome. Thanks, Deeraj. And we have Tala Pakar. He's our program manager over here at Zoho. Can you hear me all right, Tala? Hey, Nathan. Thank you so much for the intro and welcome, everyone. Yeah, so I work on the Zoho Finance Partner Program along with all my colleagues, Nathan, Deeraj, and Val. Uh, our goal is to help accountants, bookkeepers, CPAs, and really anyone who is helping clients use any of the Zoho Finance tools uh, get the most out of them. Uh, so if you have any questions, you can always reach out to any of us and you'll have our contact info at the end. Yeah, thank you, Tala. And let's go ahead and get started. So I'll let Val, go ahead and kick us off. So powerful suite of applications for businesses. We really wanted to let everybody know what Zoho is before we get started into our integrations and everything. Right. Just in case someone's not familiar with who we are as a company and what our suite entails, it's a bit much when you see it on the screen here as you're looking at it. Um, Zoho as a SaaS solution started 25 years ago, really with CRM. And since then, we have built pretty much homegrown every app, so we didn't buy anybody. We're homegrown every app, up to 55 plus apps now. We always say plus because there's always one that we're not quite aware of. They're gonna be releasing soon, it seems like. And we are a privately owned organization, so nobody tells us what to do. So we, it's real important to note that, that you know a lot of other companies beholden to shareholders and others so they'll make decisions that are not always in their customer's best interest. We have been a long-term dedicated private company to our customer's best interest and to our employees 
and uh, company best interest. So that's kind of who we are. One thing of important note as well, we couldn't do a session on Zoho without talking about our dedication to privacy and security. We don't run on anybody else's network. We don't run on Azure. We don't run on Amazon Cloud. We don't run on any of those other platforms. We run on our own global platform and it's secured and private and we're big into privacy and GDPR and other laws and rules, if you will. In, in fact, we've removed all tracking from our software and we don't track you if you use our software and we don't let other people track you. So there's the big suite of apps. There is six, if you will, sub suites. We can sell this stuff as one big bundle in the Zoho One bundle or in platforms or suite bundles or per app. And today we're going to focus in on specifically on a couple of applications, but just realize there's different ways to get the software and acquire it. Very cost effective across the board without question, whether you go for Zoho One or through the different suite platforms or each individual application. So plenty of choices for you as you're considering a Zoho application. <clears throat> the Zoho finance suite of applications is what we are really here to talk about today. And within that specifically, most you'll notice books is dead center. That's kind of our main focus with these other apps kind of hovering around that. But realize we do have invoicing, we do have subscriptions, which, uh, wow, I mean, we've done a whole webinar just on subscriptions. A lot of companies have these reoccurring billings and whatnot. We have one of the industry's best reoccurring billing systems that ties back into an accounting system. We have payroll, we have expense, which we'll talk about today. There's some new features in expense, pretty exciting. Some new features in books we'll talk about today, very exciting. And notice that there's a checkout or a way for you to set up places like a store where you can sell to people and also Zoho inventory. So this is primarily what our team focuses on is the Zoho finance suite of the 55 apps. We are really focused in on these seven apps right here. And our website, we just we got permission from the management, you're two back here, to set up a partner program, literally set it up where we want to help you uh, with your practice of helping other companies with Zoho Solutions. So we set up a Zoho Finance Partner Program, and that's driven mainly through our website, which is zoho.com slash CPA, as Nathan mentioned earlier in the startup of the program. So there is plenty of tools in here to help you. And today we're going to talk about what those solutions are, how you can take advantage of new opportunities out there, how you can integrate, collaborate. So there's quite a few things that we can share with you through this session and plan to do so. Yeah, thanks, Val. I'll go ahead and launch the first poll question. And this specifically relates to uh, the Zoho Finance Partner Program. So if you can go ahead and answer that, we would appreciate it. And just know if you answer yes, we'll be reaching out to you, sending you just a short email. Feel free to respond. And if not, don't worry about it. But thanks for walking us through that, Val. I know it's very confusing. I know the first time I heard about Zoho, I was overwhelmed. So it's great to kind of get an overview before we start getting into the applications itself. Right. And I think a lot of people, too, look at the site, Zoho.com. They're going to look at all those apps and they just kind of get a little bit lost. Uh, stay focused with us today, folks, into this financial suite. We're really going to show you specifically in books and expense, a few others. Really cool stuff you can do. Awesome. So let's go ahead and continue and get to our agenda. So to, in today's agenda, uh, we'll be covering new features to make your job easier, um, identify partner opportunities, see how Zoho can open new doors, and then we'll show you how to operate the partner store and kind of what that looks like if you were a partner. So to start off, um, we're going to talk about some new features. And one of the biggest features we had that came out this year within the finance suite was the all new Zoho expense. And it's been pretty great uh, as far as the new updates to it. So let's kind of go over those real quick. So there is an improved dashboard. And with that, you're able to um, see specialized reports and also be able to see tasks that are open to an admin. So you're also, you know, you're essentially just able to keep track of what's going on within the business through the dashboard. So it's a lot, it's pretty similar to 
what Zoho Books dashboard looks like as far as, you know, you're able to see certain reports and data without actually digging and pulling reports. So it's pretty neat. We also have expense uh, auditing and fraud. So with the expense audit, you're able to set up daily, monthly, or yearly spend limits. And what's really great about that is once these limits are exceeded, you're able to kind of monitor that and you're either the employees warned or you can block them. I wouldn't necessarily advise you to block them because that's just, I'm not sure how they would feel about that. But we also have a fraud feature, which this is awesome. I think this is one of the coolest features we added. And you're able to block certain merchants if um, you see one of your employees, it keeps going to this same merchant and you know that's not a business expense, you can block that. And also identifies you if there's any duplicated expenses and also if there's any per diem fraud or any suspicious modification. So if you, what I, what I think these new features does for the business owner or an accountant is it really lets you take more of a hands-off approach so you're not constantly worried about, hey, is something getting duplicated out there? And this will just notify you automatically mm -hmm. so you don't have to stress out about it. I mean, obviously, you need to still go out there and monitor, um, you know, at the end of the month or quarter, however you do it, just kind of quickly go through and see if you notice anything. But for the most part, this will catch certain things so you don't have to stress out about it. We also allow you to set up budgets. So kind of in line with those lim limits, uh, you're able to go out there and set budgets. And this will, again, kind of notify you and keep track of, hey, are you staying within that budget whenever you're out there spending money? So for example, um, in this they're, you know, $250 expense amount limit. So whenever they start getting close to it or they exceed it, it notifies you. So you know that you're out of budget or within budget. So I think that's a great kind of feature within the finance suite. But more specifically, I want to talk about some great Zoho Books new updates. And one of the biggest ones they came out with recently, this isn't necessarily an app update but it's, um, we offer another subscription. So it's a free Zoho Books. And this is for businesses with revenue less than 50K. And what I think is so great about this, definitely for accounts, is you're able to offer this tool to starting businesses. And so they don't have to worry about what accounting software they're going into. And what's also great is a lot of times small businesses, they don't worry about accounting software. So they're out there just doing everything on pen and paper or through memory. And this really allows businesses to really get a great foundation and throughout, uh, you know, their business life, they can really just focus on growth rather than what they're doing with their software. So that's what I think is really great about this and it offers all, you know, everything a small business needs to be successful. It offers them to, um, to have contacts, invoicing, um, expenses, just expense reporting, integrated banking, and reporting and online payments. So it's really great. And it just allows, you know, these small businesses and accountants to really land these small clients because, you know, they're all, they're always stressed about money. And this really, you know, taking this uh, fee off of their plate would really help them out. So another great feature we added to Zoho Books is Zoho Analytics dashboard in Zoho Books. If you're not familiar with Zoho Analytics, we'll talk about it a little later. But essentially, it's a, a integrated BI tool within Zoho, and you can create these all these beautiful dashboards to pull all these customized reports. And for example, this is what it would look like in Zoho Books. Um, but essentially, you create these dashboards within Analytics, and they pop up within Zoho Books. And as you can see, we have a cash flow year to date. And you're able to just click in and just really dive deeper into that report and um, built basically whatever report you put into analytics, you're able to pull up here and dig deeper into your reports. And I will just remind all of our uh, trainers that if you're not speaking, uh, please put your uh, mic on mute. That would help us out a lot. And then we also have this great integration, which with, it's our first time to inter fully integrate with a payroll company. So sure payroll, full integration. And what's great about that, obviously, is you can have stream 
streamed uh, payroll reporting and you can automate your journal entries. So we all know whenever you're doing payroll as an accountant, it is whenever you have to do a manual journal entry, at least for me, whenever I first started out, it was frustrating and confusing. But with these automated journal entries, you're able to just you know do the quick integration and have it ready to go. And obviously the stream payroll reporting is very helpful so you don't have to pull everything to Excel. We did want to show you one more feature. I know on the um, description I said three Zoho Books um, new features, but we wanted to add this other one with project accounting. And we have our, um, you know, our partner support team member, DRaj, who's going to walk us through that real quickly. So let me give him control and he'll be able to show us what that looks like. And if you've never used project accounting, Definitely pay attention to this point because I think it's a very powerful tool, definitely if you're billable, to kind of keep track of what's going on within your business and your jobs. So, D-Rod, you have control now. Okay, so let me quickly share my screen. Okay, so, yeah, can, can all of you see my screen before I start? Yep. Wonderful. Okay, so, uh, so for those of you who are new to Zoho Books, I don't have to explain much, uh, but who have been using Zoho Books for a while, they would probably be wondering why, why, why are we talking about projects now? Because this has been in Zoho Books for a long time. Now, the reason why we, we, I brought this up as a new feature here, because we, we added up a lot of functionalities to the projects module in Zoho Books, now allowing users to do full-fledged project accounting. So we'd be discussing three things, uh, three important things related to projects in Zoho Books today. First thing would be how can you track uh, revenue and expenses uh, associated to a project within the project itself. That's number one. Second thing, we'd be looking at how to set budgets for projects so, so that you don't spend too much and also make sure that your revenue is coming up properly. And the third and most important thing, how can you run project profitability reports? So these are the three things that we'd be discussing around uh, projects today. So I have a sample project uh, set up here on my screen already, and I've, I've added some data to it as well, so just so that it doesn't look all new. Now, the first thing, how can we track all income and expenses associated to a project? So once you open up a project, you'd see the section called new transaction where all transactions related to the project. It could be as simple as sending out a quotation from within the, uh, the project to your client to uh, something like setting up a recurring invoice so that automated invoices get created from the project on a fixed frequency so that it includes the unbuilt time entries, unbuilt expenses, all of that, and sends that out as an invoice to your client. So basically what you notice here is that all transactions that are related to the project, be it income or be it expenses, are, can be associated to the project itself. Now this allows you to run a profitability summary over here. You can see there's a budgeted cost that I've set up for the project and now it shows me the actual cost for the project. I've set up a budgeted revenue and it shows me the actual revenue that I've gained from the project. So this is how you make sure all transactions are linked to the project itself. Now, apart from these simple budgets, we allow you to set up an account level budget, or I would call it a detailed budget. So budgets itself is a relatively new feature, but what we've done is we've taken it a step further by introducing it for individual projects you create in Zoho Books. So just like you create an organization level budget, you can create a budget for a particular project as well. So here you see it's, it's a budget specific to the project, the Solar Panel Inc., what we were looking at. Now I have a test project ready as well, the test budget ready. So let me just show you how it'll look like. So this is, this is a budget that I, that I set up for this particular project and it shows me a detailed analysis on a quarterly basis because I've set the period uh, for the budget as quarterly. Now the final and the most important and my favorite functionality within the projects would be how you can run project profitability report. So this particular project that we're looking at, you can see that there have been, there's been a lot of transactions that have been logged against them. There are a lot of time entries that have been logged against this project. All of these have been done. Now I can just navigate to the report section 
uh, go to the profit and loss report and choose to run a report specific to a particular project, which is this particular project in here. So I can choose the project and here's the project. And I, I can filter the date frames. I can choose, should it be on a cash or accrual basis and add other filters as well if required. Not I'll just go ahead and run a report and the system's gonna show me a detailed profit and loss report that is specific to the, the project that I was looking at. So it tells me how much I spend on it, how much I've gained from it, and also make sure that I'm, I'm on the right track with profit from the project. So that's a pretty interesting functionality. Now also to just maybe touch upon the things that Nathan mentioned. So here, here are the native reports of Zoho Books. There's more than 50 reports available by default in the application, but to add up to that, we have the advanced analytics integration. So this is Zoho Analytics and the dashboard that Nathan was talking about. So all these dashboards that you see here are basically being fetched from Zoho Analytics. So you don't have to open up a new tab. You don't have to open that application separately. You can access all of that right within Zoho Books itself. So it's a re really convenient functionality, I would say. Yeah, and I will, I will point out, though, that you can't actually create the analytics reports through um, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Zoho Books, you have to create an analytics and then you can push it over here. But this really adds to your repertoire mm -hmm. as a, an accountant or, it, you know, just if you want to analyze your business to more further detail and just looking at profit and loss or your balance sheet, which is great. Mm -hmm. And uh, as far as like the Sure Payroll integration, can you show everybody where to, where to go yeah, to get yeah, that? Exactly. Yeah, that, that was where I was going to next. Yeah, so final thing. So let me show you all how you could access the Sure Payroll integration. So here's the integrations tab and here's the other application. So it's under other apps and you will see Sure Payroll over here. So it's a direct integration that Sure Payroll has built with Soho Books. So all you need to do is just key in your credentials at the Sure Payroll end and system gets, so Zoho Books connects with Sure Payroll and every pay run that you complete your corresponding journal entries will get posted in Zoho Books automatically through the integration. So there's no manual data entry involved at all. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And have you seen a lot of partners, have a lot of partners reached out to you about that integration or have they been kind of just handling that on their own? Yeah, so, so this has been a, a wonderful news for a lot of partners because relatively small firms, I don't think it'll be a problem for them to just do the manual entry. But when you get to clients who are, who are on 10 or 15 or 20 employees, and you, you end up spending a lot of time doing these import stuff when you can automate it through the integration. And the interesting thing about Share Payroll is that it provides uh, the payroll for all the states across US. We have Zoho payroll, it's coming up, and the end goal for that product is to uh, ser service all the states in the US, but for the time being, it's, it's definitely the best option available when you're, using, when you're looking for a payroll solution uh, with Zoho books. Yeah, for sure, and I, I know, like I mentioned earlier, it's, it's a headache if you have to manually go enter that in yourself. But I appreciate you kind of going through that with us. And no let's problem. go ahead and launch. Or what were we going to say, Diraj? No, no, no problem. My pleasure. Okay. Well, awesome. So I'll go ahead and launch the second poll question real quick. Uh, Diraj, I think there were a couple of questions there for Marie you want to maybe go take a look at. Uh, folks, we are working on job costing in the books product. They're, they're working on some updates to really get us to where we can do more manufacturing job costing right right now it's pretty much if you're doing manufacturing of any kind it's pretty much simple kidding is all we can really do so we really can't do uh work in progress begin inventory work in progress finished goods all that not yet that they're working on those solutions currently and i'll let um d raj talk a little bit more about or answer those questions a little bit more about the salary coming over to projects I believe is part of what Marie had there and also more yeah, detail yeah. costs. Yeah, well, yeah. I'm sorry to interrupt, by the way. I, I, I just noticed the questions here. Yeah. I'll, I'll answer them on, on, in the session, like maybe on the chat itself or the question tab. Yeah, excellent, yes. And just every heads up, everyone. They're working on it. I, I actually 
think if we had not had the pandemic thing throw everybody off guard, I think we'd probably be already be there. But, you know, fervently, they're adding a lot of states in payroll. Uh, they know that. We also know for those in Canada, okay, there's two big issues in Canada. Uh, I don't know. Sooner or later, they might throw me out the door and fire me because I keep bringing them up. Uh, data center, data center in Canada and payroll in Canada. So we're working on, you know, I'm putting a lot of pressure on them on this two fronts. So hopefully we'll see some soon, but to give them credit, you know, they really did dance and balance really well during the pandemic. Just a fun little note for everyone. We did not let go of any employee globally, company-wide. Shridhar's goal was to hang on to everybody. I think some people may have left of their own accord, but we hung on to everybody. So now we're kind of getting all back to business. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think, you know, as time goes on with payroll, like you're, we're talking about is uh, just more and more states will start opening up and well, we'll start opening more states up for our Zoho payroll for sure. But so the question I asked just what Zoho ap application are you currently using? And it looks like, um, you know, majority of everybody is using more than one application, which is great. And obviously we have some uh, Zoho uh, people are new to Zoho who joined the session, which thank you for joining. And I hope you like what you see so far. And people are just using Zoho Books. So that's awesome. So thanks. And that's kind of our audience anyway. So I really appreciate y'all answering that. And let's continue on. So we'll now get to the next part of our agenda, which is identify partner opportunities. And I'll let Tala, kind of to t I'll let Tala take it from here. Two T's in a row is kind of confusing for me, I guess. Thanks, Nathan. So when we talk about identifying partner opportunities, this basically looks at some of the uh, other services that partners are offering or could offer. Uh, and this is from past experience in talking to partners, uh, working with partners who have done this, and then also what customers are asking for. So the first one and one of the most obvious ones is migration assistance. So this means, you know, whenever clients are signing up for, uh, so for Zoho Books or any Zoho Finance application, uh, they need help in onboarding all of their information. Now, this is not a service that Zoho provides. So this is a great opportunity for partners to get their foot in the door. And partners that uh, are available in certain regions, we often try to send them uh, clients who reach out to us or to our support team. So um, in particular, you, know, you may have heard other past webinars where we have a partner that's joined. So migration assistance is only getting more and more important because uh, there, it, there aren't automated functions to import into Zoho Books, for example. Uh, there were in the past, for example, for QuickBooks Online or QuickBooks Desktop. Those are no longer available. So this is an area to focus on. Uh, and partners that do offer any type of migration assistance, reach out to us. Let us know, you know what programs you are offering migration assistance from. That way we can add you to our uh, directory and let customers know that this partner is available to do that. This is probably the fastest growing part of the partner program just because of the amount of growth of Zoho customers um, and the number of partners haven't kept up uh, to pace with that. Um, so that's an area that I really encourage partners to get into, analyze, uh, experiment with, and, and try to offer. The second is uh, something that you may not be as aware of, which is offering integrations to other Zoho applications, whether it's inside or outside of the finance suite. And then also third-party integrations. Now, sometimes this may seem a little bit daunting, especially for folks who don't have a technical background. But this doesn't have to only be, uh, you know, API code written integrations. You can actually set up integrations without writing any code using uh, tools like Zoho Flow, uh, Zapier, or uh, the built-in integrations for the Zoho Finance apps. So for example, one of the most common integrations outside of the finance suite for Zoho Books is Zoho CRM. So Zoho CRM, as most of you know, is our uh, sales and marketing uh, lead and, and order management tool. And integrating that into Zoho Books doesn't require any additional uh, you know, coding on your end. Basically, it's, it's all based on setting up the proper uh, you know, if-then statement. So if this occurs in Zoho Books, then this information will show up in CRM and vice versa. And that is actually a huge benefit for so many customers who aren't aware of how to actually go through those steps. So Zoho does make aware of all of the different help resources to our customers, but that's not always enough for our uh, 
uh, clients. So having a partner actually help them through this is an area that I strongly encourage folks to focus in on. Um, and we've talked about this in the past, but if you have specific questions on how you can do that, you can always reach out to us and we can talk about that on a case by case basis. And then this is no, this is by no means the, an exhaustive list, but the the last uh, item here to, for discussion is setting up workflows and custom functions. So this can get more into that custom writing code part uh, that I was talking about with uh, a scripting tool that Zoho has, uh, script, scripting language that Zoho has called Deluge. That is a language that can be used inside of uh, many different Zoho applications. It's based on JavaScript. And it basically allows you to write custom functions that change how the product interacts with your client's business. So for example, I've seen businesses who need some sort of custom commission calculator, or they need to update some specific uh, amount on, on an invoice based on, on other actions that happen. And you can only do that by writing a custom function. Now, a lot of those custom functions can be written with drag and drop tools, and it's more of a know-how than it is uh, a programming language. Uh, but that's an option that's there. But other than that, there are also workflows. And so the workflows that you'll see inside of Zoho Books, and um, you know, if I have a second when I do a quick demo later, I'll try to bring up Zoho Books to show you what this looks like, uh, are mainly based on those if-then statements that I talked about. So this allows you to uh, set up in-app notifications for other users if certain criteria are met. Uh, or it even allows you to update details on uh, a specific invoice or estimate or send out a notification to a client uh, if they haven't uh, met some, some other criteria. Maybe they haven't paid in a certain amount of time and you want to send them not just a, a notice that they're overdue, but uh, some other piece of information that's going to help them uh, make that payment. So that's where workflows and custom functions come into play. Um, so if we have time at the end, when I'm doing a demo, I'm going to go over a couple of these uh, in the actual product and I'll show you what that looks like. Yeah, yeah. What so tall? I do have a question for you. What are you seeing partners do the most? Are they doing migration assistant integrations? Because I know we have some partners that just do integrations. We have some that just work on workflows. What are you seeing? Yeah, I mean, definitely the majority of the interactions I have with new partners are on migration assistants because that's where they're focusing on is bringing their clients over from QuickBooks to Zoho Books. That's really the discussions I have pretty much all day long. Mm -hmm. Now. After the clients are already in a Zoho Finance product, that's when typically I talk to uh, folks about workflows. Um, Zoho and third-party integrations really come in once they're really comfortable with the software and they feel like um, they've gotten as much out of it as they can and they want to then expand to other tools. Um, but that's kind of the order I would see is probably migration assistance, then setting up workflows inside of the product, and then focusing on products that you can connect to outside. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thanks for that, Tal. And I actually pulled up the link to our help doc on migration assistance. So you can, if you're you new to Zoho Books, you need help with uh, migrating into Zoho Books. That's a great doc to help you through that. Awesome. And you posted that in the chat, I see. Yeah, chat. Yep. Well, awesome. I'll let you continue. Thanks. Forward. And so the last option, which really is kind of obvious, is products that get your foot in the door. Uh, after Zoho Books, right? So Zoho Books really is a tool that it lets clients start using an accounting system. Uh, when you look at other tools that we have, like Zoho Invoice, those are also starter tools. So all the features from Zoho Invoice are available in Zoho Books. However, there are other ways that uh, you can assist those clients uh, by offering additional services. So uh, I noticed someone in the, uh, the chat mentioned that Zoho One is like a giant candy store. And I think that's such a great that's such a great uh, analogy because uh, it really gives you the ability to try out tools that your your clients may need, um, and it, it's a very low uh, kind of a requirement to say, hey, you know, you don't have to purchase into a whole other product and have all these fees because it's simply included. So this is an area that I talk to partners about, which is, you know, it's great that we can offer regular bookkeeping assistance to most of our clients, right? And my, you know, certain services like migration assistance are really one-time services. So once those projects are over after a couple months, uh, those projects don't come back. Now, because Zoho One is like this giant candy store, there's almost this unlimited opportunity to analyze where your clients are and how they can most effectively take advantage of the tools that are available to them. So uh, earlier, Dheeraj had showed us Zoho Analytics. And I know, you know some of our partners here, like Marie Andre from Canada, 
really take advantage of all that analytics has to offer for their clients because she's able to create custom reports and dashboards for them. Um, these are things that clients aren't even sure that they can have, but that's a discussion that you can start having with your clients that say, hey, you know, what are some areas that you need help with? You know, you're focusing on your business, but how can we help you know more about it? How, how can we help you take that data and actually analyze it? Um, and that's where you can start to talk about these other tools, analytics being in that case. Um, another way you can look at this, and, and uh, my family is, is a family of uh, small business owners, and so I, we have these discussions quite often, which is, you know, we've reached some critical point where the spreadsheet is no longer working, or the notepad that we're using, or shared doc, or, um, you know, Microsoft Teams, or whatever it is, is just no longer working. We need to move up to something that's more scalable and more organized. And that's really where you can analyze these other uh, opportunities. So one of the most uh, useful ones, and Val actually absolutely loves this product, is Zoho Expense, right? So how can you start to actually have your clients who uh, have expenses being logged by their employees do this in a more organized fashion? Um, implementing a program like Zoho Expense allows them to feel like a much more enterprise-level company uh, without having to pay those enterprise-level enterprise fees for, for those products. So that's the analysis that you want to do, and that's what I recommend. Uh, you know, you sit down with your clients and have those conversations once you feel like they're comfortable with that. Their foundation right. is steady, uh, and their you know their 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 uh, their business is headed in the right direction. This is where you can have those discussions. Tyler, let me just toss one thing in here, folks. Um, my prior business, we used a lot of different solutions. We had eight instructors travel the country. We used a lot of different solutions. We tried Concur, we tried Expensify, we tried a number of different things. We actually ended up on Zoho Expense even way before I came to work for Zoho. And I could tell you, we did a lot of evaluation of different enterprise level expense management tools. Zoho Expense can stand toe to toe with anybody in the industry. And in fact, I think the data parsing in Zoho Expense is much better, does a much better job of parsing data and the speed which it runs in the cloud and everything, much better. We fixed, we had a couple of allocation issues. This latest version, Zoho Expense tool was fixed. That was months back, by the way. And so there's really honestly nothing I would say as actually a person who heavily used Zoho Expense for many years, negative about the product. Uh, use that to get your foot in the door in a lot of places because a lot of companies are really struggling with that. And that might get you the opportunity to then drag in books, just like a lot of folks use CRM as a lead to get in there and then they bring in books in the finance suite. Expense is also an enterprise class solution that can help you get in the door and get an opportunity to bring in the rest of the finance suite. Yeah, for sure. And we'll cover expense a little bit in more detail here in a second. We'll tell our will. So, Kind of what Tala was touching on is see how Zoho can open up new doors. And specifically, we have, you know, two products here to, to talk about. So I'll let Tala kind of continue on with uh, his expense conversation. Sure. So, and we mentioned some of these features from Zoho Expense earlier, but I just want to go over some of the main ones to help you uh, just get a peek into the product or uh, if you uh, haven't heard of it or if you haven't uh, used it in a while, uh, kind of get you familiar. So the first is uh, what uh, Nathan kind of talked about, which is setting up audit and compliance. So one of the most important parts of, of expense management is being able to set up these, these types of warnings to help reduce the amount of uh, you know, additional work that, uh, that an administrator has to do. So one of the easiest ways to do this is, of course, in, um, setting spend limits, uh, but also the product itself notifies users if you know, there aren't receipts for um, amounts over a certain level. So for example, anything over $25 needs to have a receipt and it'll automatically catch that. Uh, the other important parts is that it'll catch uh, duplicate transactions, it'll catch any other violations and helps the user correct their expense report before it's submitted to an admin. Because the tool really isn't all that helpful if they continue to, to have a bunch of issues that the administrators have to sort out uh, and go through. So that's the, the first uh, area that you wanna focus on. Um, the second, which is pretty interesting and is, is available to uh, companies that have, it's more, this is more of an enterprise level feature, but companies that have a, a travel team is multi-level travel management. So this allows uh, clients to actually set up or users to actually set up trips 
um, and request uh, all the different parts of that trip, whether it's flights, hotels, car rentals. And then once they go on that trip, they can record expenses against it. Uh, so there can be budgets set for that trip. Um, and there, therefore, you can analyze not just a expense report that's, that's just submitted with a bunch of expenses together, but in context with an actual trip they took, um, which is really helpful. So it kind of takes uh, the organization of, of those expenses to, a, to another level. And then uh, finally, the most important part, which is expense reporting and approval. So this entire life cycle of the expense uh, is tracked inside the product. Uh, you can set up automatic uh, report generation frequencies. So for example, you can say that, hey, reports are going to be submitted you know, on the 28th of every month. And that is something that's going to continually notify the user. And if they don't do it, then they're going to have a you know, partially submitted expense report. So even those types of functions can be set up where you can really you know, force a user's hand in, in submitting their expense reports. And sometimes that's what it takes. Uh, and I know because I'm one of those people that takes forever to submit my expense reports. <laughs> so so this is a, these are some of the areas you may want to take a look at uh, inside Zoho Expense and help open up those conversations uh, with your clients on things that they may need uh, help with. Yeah, and really, um, whenever we're talking about open new doors uh, for your clients, or I guess for your firm, we're looking at ways that can help your clients essentially not focus on their day to day act, um, day to day work within, you know, using the softwares and using Zoho Books, using Zoho Expense, and everything. We want it to be easier for them so they can focus on what they do well, which is their whatever job they currently have. So if they're they're dry cleaning business, they can focus on dry cleaning. If they're a restaurant, they can focus on their restaurant, and not focus on the accounting software itself. And these are some, uh, Tali, you want to touch on some of the integrations with uh, Zoho Expense? Um, yeah, I mean, these, these integrations are uh, a really great way for you know, users to take the most out of, uh, of their product. So even if they, let's say, aren't going to be fully in on Zoho Books, for example, they can still use tools like Zoho Expense and integrate with their existing accounting system. Um, you know, in this example, for example, Zero or Sage or, or even QuickBooks. Um, so that's uh, something that you can keep in mind is that Zoho doesn't have to be an all-in sort of system. It can allow you to uh, pick and choose what you're comfortable with. And then once you feel more comfortable, you can expand from there. So we don't require users to drop everything all at once. Uh, it's really just not uh, efficient for most businesses. So uh, this is kind of an approach that I would take to, to the integrations here. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for that, Tal. And before we continue on to Zoho Analytics, I'll go ahead and launch our, th our third polling question. And we're just, you know, what type of opportunities are you seeing with potential clients? Yeah, it actually looks like a majority of everybody so far is workflow and custom functions. Which is a great field to get into because I know, you know, whenever a lot of small businesses are getting started, um, organization and figuring out how everything works is probably the most confusing part. Definitely if you've never done accounting before. I don't know how small businesses, is. if you're not familiar with accounting, I don't know how they get started and can be successful on their own. So we'll give this about uh, 10 more seconds and then we'll continue on. Awesome. Let's so let's continue to uh, Zoho Analytics, and kind of what I mentioned earlier. If you're not familiar with it, it is a great place to build up reports. It's it's similar to Microsoft Access, I guess you could say, and it's a great place to build reports out of tables. And um, what what it really allows you to do is to get and blend data for, from multiple sources. Kind of what I'm talking about here. You can put multiple. Nathan, let, let me toss in one thing there too. I don't know if you've ever seen Power BI, Microsoft's Power BI. Yeah, Power BI. Yeah. Yeah, that that really is what analytics is going to eventually compete head to head with. Mm -hmm. Now they've added these new features you're going to talk about. We're getting closer and closer to really competing with Power BI, which will let you take data, bring it together, twist it every which way, and analyze it. So, yeah, folks, that's another one. So we mentioned access. 
that's kind of where they were for many, many years. Mm -hmm. Their new solution they're pushing heavily is Power BI. And this, our analytics now, um, I would say eight, uh, you know, eight out of 10. I'm not going to give a 10, 10. I, I think it's eight out of 10 where we need to be, but serious contender right now for Power BI and many of the other tools that are out there in the business BI suite. Yeah, for sure. And what's great about it is you can really pull and blend dat data from all these multiple places. So it integrates with, you know, all these different apps. So Google ads, QuickBooks, and I'll kind of show you a visualization of what that would look like. And obviously all our Zoho products as well. And you can build these beautiful dashboards, custom dashboards, or you can pretty much ask uh, Zoho Analytics to put something together for you. And it really allows you to analyze your business and you can collaborate um, securely online. So that's something we do currently. We use Zoho Analytics to um, kind of keep track of our ads and everything that we're putting out there and to look at the success rate of those. And also um, to see partner, um, you know, all the partners that are coming in and everything. So it's great to have some sort of dashboard where we, where we can quickly go to it and we don't have to pull all these multiple reports to get it done. And what's awesome is all the, you know, 500,000 businesses trust Zoho Analytics and they're using it currently. And it's trusted by brands that everybody knows. So Hyundai, Ikea, Suzuki, HP. So it's all these businesses start, are starting to see what Zoho Analytics is and how powerful it is and how useful it is. And so whenever we're talking about how you can blend and import your data. This is really kind of, this isn't what it's going to look like for you, obviously, but uh, you, you can blend all these different reports together. So in there, it was showing uh, QuickBooks and, you know, Zoho Books itself, and you're able to pull um, these reports and these make these beautiful dashboards. So right here, this is just an example of one. So it's marketing ROI dashboard. And if you look at the top right, um, you can see that it pulled from Google Ads, CRM, and also Zoho Books. And what's what's great about that is you're able to pull and take a look at everything, um, you know, the cost. So, for example, if you look in the middle there, it says average lead acquisition cost. So you're able to pull that from Zoho Books and also from CRM and kind of in Zoho and Google Ads to see what it's costing per lead. And so it's really great to analyze that to see if you're getting more efficient or, you know, less efficient. And that's where kind of that ROI in the top left comes into play. And so kind of what what's great about Zoho is we really don't require any coding experience. It's just drag and drop play with um, Zoho Analytics. So you can go in there and play around with what report you want to see. And you can also view, view it before you kind of put it into a dashboard so you're not going in blindly. And you can really create these beautiful custom dashboards that make sense to you and your team members. So it's been a really great tool and we're, we're working on putting together a presentation in the future for that. I know um, we've done a few in the past, but we really wanna dive deeper into it to show how accountants can use this um, for their clients or for their own business. Yeah, so that's it for a really the main points of this presentation, but I did want to do a demo of how to operate the partner store. And also Tala will jump in and show a few of the features in Zoho books that we already touched on. And so, yeah, let me go ahead and give him control and we can go on. Actually, before we give him control, I want to go ahead and launch the fourth poll question. And then we'll let him just kind of demo us until the very end of the session. Does that sound good, Tala? Yep, sounds great. Awesome. So it looks like the majority of everybody is using Zoho Books and, you know, just even showing Zoho Books to new clients. Um, I'm sure. Definitely with our pricing, it's it's very great for you know everybody who's not familiar with Zoho Books. And obviously with that free Zoho Books, I'm sure we're going to get you know a bunch of new small businesses join the Zoho program. 
Uh, Nathan, if you could. Yeah, yeah, I'll go ahead and turn this over to you. All right, perfect. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen with you really quickly. And so just want to cover a couple of things inside of uh, the Zoho store, the payments portal, the dashboard that, that we have. Um, so this is really where our partners are able to um, analyze all of the information related to their subscriptions for their clients. And so uh, there's a few options here, and I just want to show you this. I know a lot of partners who are on here have used this all the time, but um, some things that you may have forgotten or things that you may just want to take a look at is what we'll cover. So the first thing is, is that when you first enter your partner store, uh, once you're signed up as a Zoho partner, uh, you want to set up your partner code. So the partner code is really the most important thing to allow you to uh, have partners tag you as their partner inside of Zoho. And this is where you want to do that. So you can, you can make this partner code anything you want it to be. Um, this is just a demo account that I use. And so you can make it the name of your uh, organization, you can put some numbers in it, what have you. Once you have set up your partner code, what you're able to do is, is basically you give this link to your clients, this tag your partner link, and in their account, what they see is this. So they'll come to a page that has all the different Zoho products they're using. If they're using Zoho One, then you'll see Zoho One on here, if it's a bundle or you see other bundles. Otherwise, the individual products like Zoho Books are on here. And what they'll do is they'll click on that product They'll go ahead and click on tag partner, and then they'll type in the code that you gave them uh, here. And so once they do that and they hit submit, it would basically uh, map that customer to your partner account. Now, another option, instead of using the this, this uh, tag your partner link, is there's a direct link that already enters your code. So if you give this to a client, they go ahead and open this, you email this to them, they, they click on it. It'll open up to that similar page that has all the tiles. And it'll just take a quick second. And once all of those apps open up, um, instead of having to enter in the partner code, they just hit tag, and that partner code is already entered. So they can simply do that. So that's an easier way to do it. Uh, those are the two options here inside of the partner code option. So this is how clients map you. So it used to be that partners were simply able to map clients directly uh, but that's no longer the case. The client actually has to approve that mapping. Uh, so you can still send them a link by coming here into the customers option, click on add new customer, and then you can select a service that your client might be using and enter their email address. And once you do that, you can check availability. So it says this is already, uh, this, you know, this client's already tagged here, but if they weren't, you'd be able to send them the tagging link and it would basically send them an email already to do that. Mm -hmm. um, so that's that's basically how uh, clients get added into your store. So once clients are already added into your store, this is what they look like. You have all these different clients here. You can see what plan they're on, their total revenue. And so in this case, if I wanted to make some changes, I can click on the settings gear icon, and then I can click on manage. Once I click on manage, I'm then able to actually use the same tool that our sales team at Zoho uses to manage their subscription. So this will allow you to see all of these different uh, tools that they're using. If you want to change the pay period for this client, uh, maybe they want to move to the yearly plan, you can actually change that. Uh, what pricing strategy they're on, how many employees they have. Th this is the exact sales tool that our sales team uses. Uh, and you are able to actually make those updates. There are some changes that you can't make here. You do have to re you know, reach out to, this, to the support team for Zoho One, for example. But for the most part, uh, you, changing users and upgrading and downgrading some of these uh, uh, add-ons, you can do so here and simply uh, update the license. Now, in addition to that, you do have some reports that you have access to. So partner summary reports would, would give you information on, on your clients. So how much of your uh, revenue comes from upgrades, how much of it is recurring revenue, uh, and then calculating commission uh, for these uh, 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 different clients that you have is also something you can do. So Zoho's, uh, Zoho's partner program commission is paid out every $100 that is accrued, and that can either be paid out through PayPal or uh, via check. And uh, so there's a few options that you can look at here for revenue reports. And then you can also do customer reports, comparison reports, or transaction reports. So you have all this different information here that, that, uh, that you can utilize. So this is the main kind of partner store tool, as we call it, that you can manage the subscriptions for your clients. 
Now we also have a portal that partners get access to. So this is at zoho.com slash partners. This is also where you can sign up to become a partner. Uh, if you're not currently a Zoho partner, instead of seeing access, it'll say sign up and it'll take you to a sign up page. Uh, if Once you do become a Zoho partner, this then becomes access partner portal. And when you click on that, it'll take you to a host of other resources that partners have access to. So if you don't have access to this or you, or, and you are already a Zoho partner, reach out to our team. We'll make sure you get access. Uh, if you don't have access to the Connect group, which is a um, basically an, an, an intra-company social media network, and in this case, it's between all the partners, uh, let us know and we'll get you access to that as well. But you'll find a number of resources here. And the most important of those resources is under the onboarding course, there's actually a bunch of other um, videos and certifications that we've posted and we are continually adding to. So uh, the most recent courses that you'll see here are related to Zoho CRM. Uh, but you also find that there are courses related to Zoho campaigns, um, as well as uh, some Zoho Books courses that will be coming up soon. And if you're a brand new partner, you definitely want to start with the onboarding course because this will show you how to use the, the SOAR tool that I just showed you uh, and some of the other resources that you have here. So this is an area called uh, Zoho Spark. Uh, it's our learning management system within Zoho. This is a, uh, an area that's going to continue to get more certifications, really where we're going to build out all of our certification courses for partners. Um, so this is something you want to check out, and you can access this from inside of the partner portal. Uh, other than that, you can also find a branding kit here. So all the logos for different Zoho products are here in, in different resolutions. So you can put this on your website or for print. Uh, guidelines on how to actually use them and requirements that Zoho has. Uh, and then finally, partner support. So this is where uh, DRAJ comes into play, but our partner support request form is here. The product that you have questions related to, um, and then go, you can go ahead and submit a, a support form here. This goes directly to a support team that's dedicated just for partners. Um, so there's nothing else that that team does other than support all of those partners. Um, so this is an area that you're going to get uh, you know, uh, new resources periodically. Um, this is something we're trying to make a, a kind of global hub for all of our partners across the hub. So it's not just finance partners. So you'll notice there's lots of information here for uh, other partner programs and and uh, so vice versa, you know, partners from from the sales and uh, marketing side of things can find out more information about our finance partners. Um, and it's a really a place for folks to connect. Um, and that really brings me to the last thing, which is that connect portal that I was talking about. Um, so once you get access, you, it'll actually take you into Zoho Connect. This is a demo account, so I don't have access into it. Uh, but that's where you can communicate with other partners. We'll have a bunch of discussions there with our partners. So make sure you let us know if you don't ha already have access to that, and we will make sure you do uh, get access. Um, so unfortunately, that's all the time I have for right now. I know I mentioned I was going to show you a couple of things in Zoho Books. Um, they really were related to the automation functions, and we cover those in detail in our Zoho Books presentations. If you're interested in seeing more about that, uh, drop us an email, and we'll, we'll send you a re recording link to our past Zoho Books webinar where we cover all of that information. Um, and then, of course, we'll cover that in the future uh, webinars that we have as well. Um, so I'm going to pass control back over to Nathan, and I think Nathan can put up our contact info for everyone before you close out the session. Yeah, I appreciate it, Tala, and you know, thanks for walking everybody through that. I know um, a lot of times partners are reaching out to me definitely to add uh, clients to their partner store and everything, so it's great to see that and see where all the resources are. And here's our contact information. Um, you can contact Val, Tala, or myself, and we'll be able to help you out wherever we can. And like Tala mentioned earlier, you, you'll be able to um, reach out to support through that link that he he mentioned. And also, if you have any specific questions, you can reach out to us and we'll be able to answer them quickly. Or if we can't answer them, then we'll be able to help find you someone who can answer the question. And like Tala mentioned, if you can go over to um, the partner sign up if you're a new partner, and you can schedule a meeting with us. And there's actually the link for the bookings for that meeting. And I believe there's a handout for that link as well. So go ahead and sign up for that link so you can talk to us about becoming a potential partner. And thank you, very everybody, for joining today's session. I'm going to end it. And just remember, if you want to receive that CPE, you need to fill out the evaluation. Thanks, Val, Diraj, and Tal. I appreciate it. Thanks, everybody. Really well done. Great to see everyone. Thank you. Bye. Yeah, take care. Thanks. Bye -bye. Take care.